TT said if you use this exact strategy within 90 days you'll quit your job and it works so beautifully and today I'll be walking you through step by step on how to actually use this strategy, how to form it and what sessions and what timings you can actually run this set of strategy on. Let's get straight into it. Now ITT did actually teach this in one of his teachings. Um, I'll drop the link below to one of his videos. It's very, very long. It's like three hours long where he's explaining the strategy where I'm going to break it down in literally 10 minutes. Now I've also made a checklist for you guys. Uh, this is going to be checklist. This will also be in the description below so you guys can actually read this and use this to your advantage. Now, walking you guys to uh, through the actual checklist. So first things first, we're going to take it, tape, sorry, I've got a stutter. Sorry about that, guys. We're going to take in the time aspect of things. So you're going to mark out 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Now, this has to be in New York timing. Make sure this is in New York timing. So I'll show you guys how to actually change your uh, trading view timing into New York timing. Second step is liquidity. You have to identify the first five minute buy side and sell side liquidity swing points before the 9.30 session that price can run out. Three, market structure shift plus displacement. As soon as either buy side or sell side gets run out, at that very moment, drop to one minute and annotate the current valid swing points. Four, fair value gap. Soon as price shifts structure with valid displacement, annotate the displacement high and low. Within that range identified, is there a fair value gap? If not, then there is no trade. So this is perfect for actual um, mechanical um, discipline. So you can actually be disciplined whilst actually using the strategy. You have clear targets, clear points to actually work with. So it's not like you're using anything discretionary. Um, it's going to be a lot of mechanical uh, steps. So five, limit order. Once we have identified the fair value gap, we will set a limit order just slightly above or below the fair value gap because we anticipate price will come back to fill that gap. Now, six, stop loss. Stops will go above or below that first candle of, um, of the fair value gap pattern, which also consists of three candles. Seven, your target is just going to be the opposite uh, opposing liquidity. Now, jumping straight into the chat, um, chart, so to actually change your timing on the bottom right corner of trading view, you can actually change it to New York timing, which I've currently done. So what is the first step of this video? Mark out your 9.30 and 11 a.m. session. So what I'm going to use here, I'm going to use the vertical line. Where is 9.30? Mark out 9.34 and 11 a.m. Boom. So that is now done. Now, what is the next step? Step two on this actual strategy is going to be liquidity. Identify the first five minute buy side and sell, sell side liquidity swing points. Okay, perfect. So make sure you're on the five minute time frame. Also, this works with any pair, Forex pairs, indices. Um, my personal favorite is gold, I actually trade gold personally. So marking out liquidity. First is gonna be this low here, clear liquidity. Uh, let's set a template on this. Uh, liquidity. Uh, another swing point is going to be this high here which is another run on liquidity. So what you wanna do, you wanna actually identify both sell side and buy side um, liquidity swing points. Now these two are the swing points. Now, what we're gonna do is this is where patience plays in, another mechanical step. You're gonna wait for your session to actually start. So right now you've actually got your swing, your liquidity points marked out. You're just gonna wait for price to actually take out either one of those. So let me just bring back our document. Step two. So step um, two is going to be liquidity. Ident identify the first five minute buy side, sell side liquidity swing point. So we've done that before 9.30 session that price can run out. So we need price to actually take out one of these sides of liquidity. So what we're going to wait for, we're going to wait for exactly that. Okay, boom. As soon as 9.30 begins, our session begins, we are actively on the chart. So our buy side liquidity um, point has been taken. Okay, what do we have to do when our buy side liquidity gets taken? So three. Market structure shift and displacement. As soon as either buy side or sell side gets run out, at that very moment, drop to the one minute and annotate the current valid swing point. Perfect. Let's jump into the one minute. Okay, perfect. One minute time frame, right? Our buy side has actually been finally taken out. What we want to do here is mark out any um, swing point. So that's lows right now. Obviously, we're aiming to go um, down, sorry. As, as you can see here, lower lows and lower highs are being formed. We're going to get liquidity sweeped and then we're going to continue that trend. So back into the one minute. Now, where is a low? So this here is a low. As you can see, what actually identifies a low is if the candle before and after is higher than the previous low that's being made. So as you can see here, we have this candle, which is higher than the low. 
and the next candle is also higher. This makes this a valid low. So what you want to do here is mark this low out like so. Right, marked out. Okay, another low has been created here, as you can see here. Now, what makes a valid low again? The previous candle is higher than the actual low, so as you can see, and the candle after is higher than the actual low made. Valid low made, done. So once you've actually identified the current, make sure you're always staying up date with the current low or current swing point, whether that's in a buy or sell. So obviously, if you're looking for buys, it will be highs, but right now we're looking for sells, so we want lows to get taken out. Okay, another low has been made. Okay, what is this? <clears throat> What's been made here? Another low. Perfect. What do we do? We want to mark that out. Is the previous candle higher than the actual low? Yes. Then we have the low. Is the next candle higher than the low? Yes. Okay, valid low. Done. What we want to do is now mark that low out. Perfect. Hold on a minute. We've got another low being created here. Why? Why is this a low? Why is this low? What have I been going about? So the previous candle was higher than the actual low. Next candle is also higher. That's a valid low being made. So what we want to do is now move our low. So this is our current low, right? Now, if I, let's bring back our um, document. Now, three, market structure shift with displacement. As soon as either buy side or sell side gets run out, at that very moment, drop to one minute and annotate the current swing points. All right, swing points have been annotated. Now we need a market structure shift. What is a market structure shift, guys? Cool, let me quickly show you guys. Mark shift, shift is something like so. As you can see here, this low gets taken. Market structure shift has been done. What do we anticipate from this? Um, we actually anticipate some form of retracement. Here we'll be met with a fair value gap or order block and we continue that down. So if we take that back, So now we're looking for some form of market structure shift and displacement. Also, guys, as I bring this back, market structure is very important that you take into account. Market structure shift and displacement. So what is displacement, okay? Market structure shift has been um, annotated for you guys. Displacement, what is displacement? Displacement is when we have big energetic candles taken out a swing point. So this would be a displacement candle. This, however, is not a displacement candle, all right? So this wouldn't be a displacement candle because there's not a lot of energy, there's not a lot of uh, volume within that. However, this candle, if we added this candle taken out this low, this that is exactly what displacement is. So we're waiting for a market structure shift, so we want this low to be taken out with a en energetic candle with uh, that being displacement along with the market structure shifts. Okay, boom, what do we have here? What is this? This is a market shift with displacement. Now, let's bring back our Word document. What do we need next? Next, a fair value gap. Soon as price shifts structure with valid displacement, annotated displacement, high and low, within that range identified, is there a fair value gap? If not, then there is no trade. So let's have a look. What is a fair value gap? Fair value gap is when there is a gap in price. So only sell side is offered. What do we have here? What is this? only sell side being offered. Fair value gap, done. So the fair value gap consists of three candles, remember? We have the candle before, we have the displacement, and then we have the candle after. Within that gap is where um, a fair value gap lies. Done, okay. So what do we what do we have to do now? Now that we've got our fair value gap um, placed out, a limit order. Once we have identified the fair value gap, we will set up a limit order just slightly above or below the fair value gap because we anticipate price will come and fill that gap. Okay, perfect, no worries. Let's a limit order now. So, our limit order has to be just below the fair value gap. Now, the reason why is ICT is very, very precise with strategies. Now, with spreads, factor in spreads, we want to place our limit order just slightly below, just in case if we get tapped and our uh, position doesn't actually get executed. So, this is why our position needs to be slightly below. Now, where is the stop loss need to be? Stop loss has to be stops will go above or below the first candle of the fair value gap pattern, which consists of three candles that I was talking about. Now, the three candles uh, involved is the one before the displacement, the actual displacement candle, and the one after. So, um, 
our stops has to go just above this candle here. Now I'm going to say at that high. Reason being is that's a very, very, very state safe stop loss for um, our position as we do anticipate our fairly, fair value gap to get filled in and then move away anyways. So we're giving so much lead room for that. So and where does our TP have to be? Target opposing liquidity. So what can we target here? Um, let's place. Let's target um, <clears throat> this sort of either this fair value gap or we can target these low, this sort of trend line liquidity here. Perfect, 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 perfect. This trend line liquidity is what we will be targeting for now. Now, if you want to learn a bit more about liquidity, head over to our other video um, on our channel. So we're going to be targeting this trend line liquidity to be taken out. Um, so TP is going to be here. So one to eight risk to rule ratio. Now let's see, let's see if we actually get tapped in and how we uh, go forward about that. Okay, we've been tapped into our order. Finally, we've been tapped in. Now, this is where patience plays work again. So we're waiting, 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 waiting for our fair value gap, waiting for our uh, limit order to be tapped into. Now, what do we do? Now, it's just a game of patience. Boom. As you can see, TP absolutely smashed. We could have gone even for this low if we wanted to, giving us a 1 to 2.5 risk to roll ratio. But that is um, really a short breakdown of the strategy. Very, very, very precise. ICT actually teaches in one of his teachings. He takes hours and hours on explaining this was very concise. Cut down into 10 minutes for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, drop a like, comment, whatever you guys want to see, what I can help you on, I'll try and do so.